There are a ton of great task managers for iOS, and I've tried a lot of them. They're all great for something, and after six months of use, I've finally settled on Todoist as my go-to task manager. What I like about Todoist is its minimal design. I can get in and add stuff to my lists or mark things as completed quickly. It's also web-based and has a backend that supports lots of different kinds of automation. It even has support for collaboration for those that work with others. Todoist is an app I'm excited to use and eager to see what's in its future. I'm going to be covering how the app works in the first part of this video, and in the second, I'm going to be covering how I use it. I'll be showing what the app looks like off an iPad, but it looks and functions the same on all platforms. All right, so let's jump into Todoist. As you can see, there's a very simple layout. On the left side, we have menus where we can filter what tasks we see, and on the right side, we have the tasks for our currently selected category. The first option on the left is Inbox. This is where all of our tasks live. If we go in there, we will see what tasks I have created. I've just cleared up a bunch, so right now it's kind of bare. While in Inbox, all of our tasks are arranged from oldest to newest. I personally don't like this view. It makes me feel overwhelmed, though it has been handy to see what I've been putting off. Next up is Today View. This is my personal favorite. Here we can see what's due today and what's overdue. This is usually where I work out of all day long. I like this view because it's focused on what needs to be done and it's not showing things I can't take care of yet. The last view option is the next seven days and it does what it says on the tin. We can see everything that's coming up in the next seven days. I look at this every day to see what's coming up in the future so I can kind of keep it in the back of my head. I used to use Trello to keep track of where I am with all my video projects. With Todoist, I've been using its project feature for that. For each video, I create a separate video project, and here I can track where I am with each video. I also use this feature to house my grocery list. Tasks and projects are separate from the inbox, so this makes it ideal for lists like groceries. Labels are great for those that have million item task lists. I started using these recently, and they're great for filtering. Before I was using them, I was losing tasks that didn't have due dates. Labels really help organize items that don't have specific due dates, but relate to bigger areas. Filters are great for organization. You can filter due dates, projects, tasks assigned to other people, and more. Unlike the inbox feature, filters will include everything, including items in the projects. You can build and combine queries yourself, so if there's something you want specific. There's a handy guide to check out for building filters to fit your needs. A task manager's most important job, in my opinion, is being able to add tasks quickly. Todoist has that covered. Hit the plus button and start typing your task. You can use natural language to set a date or even tell it to repeat. The buttons below will allow you to set a reminder, label, project, share with others, set priority, and even add a comment. Once you have all that, hit the send button and Todoist will add the task where it belongs. I mentioned when adding tasks in Todoist, you can use natural language. This means you can type something like, Take out the garbage tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. and it'll parse the data and set a reminder for 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. I love this feature. It makes it so quick to add a task and that is really important in my book. A feature that's become a staple for the way I use Todoist is Smart Reschedule. This will take all the tasks that are past due and give suggestions on when they can be completed based on how busy you are for the rest of the week. So if I run out of time for something on Sunday and if I'm booked up Monday and Tuesday, it will suggest completing it on Wednesday. If you don't like the idea of Smart Rescheduled, you can manually reschedule. By swiping left on the task, you can get the reschedule menu. There's a shortcut for tomorrow and next week, an option to manually set a date, and an option to remove the date completely. Another nice feature is the ability to edit multiple tasks. Hit the menu button in the top right and select multiple tasks. Tap the tasks you want to edit. You can use the menu buttons to edit the tasks. You can mark them as complete, change the due date, set priority, share with others, move, and delete. For those with really large task lists, you can search through Todoist. Hit the menu button in the top right, select search, and search for your task. Todoist also supports spotlight search, so you can search outside of the app as well. Karma is a system that tries to add gamification to Todoist. You can set a minimum to the amount of tasks you want to complete, and then it will give you points for each task completed. Depending on how many tasks you complete, it, that shows your productivity level. Karma is the first thing I turned off when I started using Todoist. I hate the idea of having a feature that judges me on if the minimum amount of tasks I do in a day. Some days I just have one task that's really long. And frankly, I don't care about my productivity level. At the end of the day, if I cross everything off my list for that day, I know I did a good job. This feature is my biggest complaint about Todoist and I'm glad I can turn it off. For me, I've always taken the approach of adding everything to my task manager, even things like taking out the trash. If the task isn't something that needs to be done by a set date, I will add an arbitrary date just so I get a reminder that it needs to be done. 
I've mentioned before how much I hate app badges, so I use the badges on Todoist to sort of shame me into getting tasks done. My task manager is one of the only applications that has all the notifications turned on. Todoist has two different kinds of notifications, mobile push and email notifications. I turn the email notifications off. They're not needed. I just use the mobile notifications. I use emoji on projects and labels to make where a task belongs stand out. This way I can just glance at what's coming up and I have an idea of what's going on for my week. It also adds color to a task list, which can help, because let's face the facts, task managers are not fun. Since Todoist is web-based, it has a backend that supports all sorts of automation. The two I use are Workflow and IFTTT. Workflow is a great app, and I've used it to be able to do a lot of cool stuff with Todoist. I have one workflow when I create a new video project, will go through and add every task it takes to complete that video project. I have another workflow that from the Today View widget I can use add a new task using natural language. This way I don't have to go into the app and add a new task. I can do it anywhere from iOS. IFTTT is great for automation. I use this for my Amazon Echo support. I know there is built-in support for Todoist in the Echo, but I like the way IFTTT handles it better. I created a recipe to add items to my project list called groceries. This way I can add stuff straight to my project. I can also do this for tasks as well. I created another recipe with IFTTT that forwards all of my reminders from the Reminders app to Todoist. This way I can add stuff using Siri. Todoist is a free app to download, but there is a premium subscription. It gets you things like push notifications, labels, custom filters, and more. It's definitely worth looking into if you're interested in the app. It's just $29 a year, and honestly, in my opinion, that's a steal. To wrap up, I really like Todoist. I've tried a lot of task managers, but I think I'm going to be sticking with this one for a while. If you have any questions, leave them below. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like what I'm doing here. Thank you.